Have you ever wondered how your phone keeps the screen alive even when the battery's almost gone? Or how a camera flash suddenly bursts with light in just a blink? Well, the secret behind these tiny electrical miracles is one of the coolest components in electronics, the capacitor. In today's deep dive, we're going to explore exactly what a capacitor is, how it works, the different types, and where you'll find them in the real world. So grab your notebook, maybe a coffee, and let's power up your knowledge. What is a capacitor? All right, so let's start with the basics. A capacitor is a passive electronic component that stores energy, but not like a battery. Nope, capacitors store energy electrostatically, meaning they build up and release electric charge quickly. At its simplest, a capacitor is made of two conductive plates, separated by an insulating material called a dielectric. No current actually flows through the dielectric. Instead, when voltage is applied, electrons pile up on one plate, creating a negative charge, while the other plate becomes positively charged. This separation of charges creates an electric field. That's where the energy lives. And here's the best part. Capacitors can charge and discharge almost instantly. That makes them super useful in circuits where timing or sudden energy bursts are required. Capacitance and units. So how do we measure how much a capacitor can store? That's where capacitance comes in. It's measured in farads, named after the legendary Michael Faraday. But in real-world electronics, you're not usually working with full farads. You'll mostly see values like microfarads mu f, a millionth of a farad, nanofarads nf, a billionth, or even picofarads pf, a trillionth. Here's the basic formula. C equals Q divided by V, where C is capacitance, Q is charge in coulombs, and V is voltage. So the larger the surface area of the plates, or the closer they are together, the greater the capacitance. How capacitors work now. How does a capacitor actually behave in a real circuit? Let's say you connect a capacitor to a battery. During charging, electrons rush to one plate. That creates a potential difference between the plates. But over time, as the charge builds up, it gets harder for current to keep flowing. Eventually, the capacitor becomes fully charged. The voltage across the plates equals the battery voltage, and current flow stops. But when you disconnect the battery and hook up a load, like an LED, the capacitor begins discharging, releasing its stored energy in a quick burst. That's how capacitors power things like flashes or smooth out power fluctuations. This ability to charge and discharge rapidly makes them perfect for all sorts of clever circuit tricks, like filtering, coupling signals, and even timing pulses. Types of capacitors. Capacitors aren't one size fits all. They come in a variety of types, each with specific strengths. Let's walk through the most common ones. Ceramic capacitors. Tiny, cheap, and non-polarized. Great for high-frequency applications, like RF circuits, or audio filtering. Electrolytic capacitors. These offer high capacitance in a small size, but they're polarized. That means you've got to connect them the right way. Common in power supply filtering and energy storage. Tantalum capacitors. Smaller than electrolytics, but more stable also polarized. You'll often find them in phones and compact devices. Film capacitors. These are large but super stable, great for precision applications where accuracy is key. Super capacitors or ultra capacitors. Now these are beasts. They store huge amounts of charge, thousands of times more than typical capacitors. Used in electric vehicles, regenerative braking, and even backup power systems. Bottom line, choosing the right capacitor depends on your circuit's voltage, capacitance, size, and stability requirements. Capacitors in circuits. Let's talk wiring. How you place capacitors in a circuit changes how they behave. In series, total capacitance decreases. The more you add, the less you get. Strange, right? In parallel, capacitance adds up, so you can build up capacity by combining them. You'll often find capacitors paired with resistors to form RC circuits. These are super important in electronics. They create timing delays, filter out noise, and help shape signals. For example, your microwave timer, blinking lights, or even your guitar pedal all rely on RC circuits, real-world applications. So where exactly are capacitors used? Honestly, everywhere. 
Here are just a few real-world examples. Power supply filtering. Smooths out voltage ripples after AC to DC conversion. Timing circuits. Used in clocks, alarms, and anything that blinks or beeps on a delay. Coupling and decoupling. Pass AC signals while blocking DC or isolate noise from sensitive components. Camera flashes. Store energy and release it instantly for that bright burst of light. Energy storage. In EVs, solar inverters, and industrial machines, supercapacitors are game changers here. Without capacitors, most modern devices would be jittery, unreliable, or simply wouldn't work. Important notes and safety tips. And before we wrap up, a few quick safety tips. Polarity matters, especially with electrolytics and tantalums. Reverse them, and you could end up with a popped cap. Literally. Watch the voltage rating. Never go over what the capacitor is rated for. Discharge before handling. Large caps can hold a charge even after power's off. That zap? It's no joke. Treat capacitors with respect, and they may be small, but they're mighty. All right, let's do a quick recap. Checkmark capacitors store energy using an electric field, not chemistry like batteries. They can charge and discharge quickly, making them ideal for timing and filtering. There are many types. Ceramic, electrolytic, tantalum, film, and supercapacitors, each with its role. Capacitors are everywhere. In your phone, your TV, your camera, and even your electric car. Handle them safely and they'll serve you well. If this video sparked some curiosity, give it a like, subscribe for more deep dives into electronics, and hit that bell so you don't miss the next one. And hey, drop a comment below. What's the next component you want to explore? Diodes, inductors, transistors. Thanks for watching. And remember, every spark of knowledge starts with a little capacitance.